This time last year, we were showing you streets packed with protesters and damage around downtown. Today, the physical mess is cleaned up. But for a lot of people, the mental mess hasn't gone anywhere. News 8's multicultural reporter Katira Winfrey joining us now with that story. Well, Phil, some say the emotions we saw through protests and unrest were the result of people who felt unheard. Although we're hearing and having more conversations about social and racial justice, we haven't reached a point where we can give a full out applause, but there is hope that we'll get there. One year ago, Indianapolis reached a boiling point. Daylight protests turned into nighttime unrest. It was in the days immediately after George Floyd's death, who died after a Minneapolis police officer knelt on his neck for more than nine minutes. This was Troy Tate last year. I can't control all these people. I can't tell them to stop being angry. I can't tell them to stop being hurt. Here he is today. Nobody really wanted it to, to get to that point. But I felt like there were people who felt like their voices weren't being heard. That night, he remembers the streets on fire, literally, but also figuratively. People upset that generations of fighting for social justice counted for nothing. There's some hope, but he says there needs to be some accountability, starting with a zero tolerance policy for police brutality. Because 100 years from now, people will look back on 2020 and 2021 and say, wow, you know, I can't believe all that happened. Just like we reflect on the events of the Tulsa Race Massacre. Before the sun went down, Aaron Williams and other clergy took to the State House steps. From the White House to, the White House. to this house right here behind us. Hold our elected officials accountable. Urging calm and nonviolence. By nightfall, a lot of those words of caution ignored. We understood why the frustration was there, but by no means did we condone the actions behind that frustration. A year later, he applauds steps being taken by local leaders, legislators, and employers, like IMPD implementing policy changes, the governor appointing the state's first chief equity inclusion officer, and corporations vowing to invest in racial equity. And the justice system working, convicting one of the former officers in George Floyd's death, but it's not enough. We never want to see this happen again. It is very unfortunate in today's society that we live in. We will see another instance like this. How do we prevent that from happening again? And it'll take more than just hoping for something better. We all play an equal role in fighting for justice. I think ultimately, as a community, we need healing. We've checked the box on one thing, but we have 20 other things that we have to still address. And the people I spoke to say the pandemic may have helped push conversations about racial justice along, saying it gave people time to stop and pay attention. Reporting in the studio, I'm WISH TV News 8's multicultural reporter, Katira Winfrey.